IED. This is going to be 1.3.4 CAD Modeling Skills Part 4. Last time we finished up our part by using a couple of pattern tools and the offset and extrusion tools and this time in the assignment they just switch over to something completely different and they're like okay well now that you know how to do that we're going to make a uh, precision screwdriver set where it looks like it holds in the individual pieces or screwdriver bits. Um, what we're going to be designing is we're going to be designing the bottom part of the plastic object that is the blue object down below. And when I look at it, I see that there's a definitely a couple of different uh, parts that are going to be used here. And um, some of these are going to be useful whenever we um, do other projects. So it's it's useful to kind of learn these uh, tricks and, and designs on how to actually get things to work out. And likewise, we're going to be doing this in on shape. We're not going to be doing this in Fusion 360 because COVID is COVID. So therefore, we're going to have to use the online component of uh, our instructions so that we can actually do things. So here we go. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off and it looks like I'm going to go from the bottom of the object up to the top of the object. So it really looks like the side length of this from one side to the other. If I were to uh, move it down, I'm going to guess is it looks like it's probably going to be a little bit longer than an inch. Why don't we go one and a quarter? So we'll say it's 1.25 inches for every edge right here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a pentagon base and let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to go ahead and just create, I'm going to use the same document for 1.3.4 CAD modeling skills and I'm just going to create a new part studio and it'll bring up the basic shape like this. I'm going to create a sketch, make the sketch on the top, go to the top view and I'm going to make a pentagon and I'm going to make that pentagon have, let's see, let's go to the polygon tool before I go crazy. Yep, we're going to go here and Let's make a polygon. So I'm going to click, and then the number of sides is going to be five. Click. All right. I would really like to add a couple of constraints to this first and foremost. First thing is I would really like this pentagon to be flat on one side. So I'm going to take, um, like, like it's going against the axis. So I'm going to go for the horizontal constraint. I'm going to click on this bottom one so that it becomes horizontal. And then I also want to add a dimensional constraint to it as well. So I'm going to add a dimensional constraint. I'm going to go from this point to this point. And let's go ahead and make that 1.25 inches. Hit enter. And now we have a pentagon that is 1.25 inches. Move that dimension kind of out of the way so that we can see what's going on. And this is our base. Okay. And the first thing that they want us to do is they want us to kind of make a chamfer, or they want us to make a uh, uh, extrusion that goes up. And we could extrude up and then use a chamfer, uh, but there are a couple of other options that we can use as well. We can also extrude with a taper. So we're going to try to do that in on shape, and we're going to try to extrude with a taper. So I'm going to click the extrude button, and there's a couple of other options that we can do. I'll click the uh, pentagon and it just goes straight up like this. Now what we can do though is, let's see, about how high is that? I don't know. Um, if it's one inch across, why don't we just go ahead and say that that is just, um, how about 0.25 inches up? So I'm going to make that extrusion depth 0.25. But it looks like it kind of goes inwards, so it kind of looks like it tapers inwards. So what we're going to do is there is a spot down here where it says second in position. You can uh, use that to extrude in the other direction. We don't necessarily need that, but we're going to click the draft button. And you can put in how many degrees you want it to draft. So I can type in, let's say that I want it to go in 30 degrees. Whenever I click that, it's going to go either in or out 30 degrees. In this case, the taper is going outwards 30 degrees. So uh, on the bottom, you're going to have a pentagon, and on the top, you're going to have a bigger pentagon. If I swap the direction, instead of going outwards, it'll go inwards. And that looks like what the bottom of the screwdriver set looks like. So instead of having to add a chamfer, I'm just going to add this degree to my extrusion, and it's going to go ahead and make this shape with the chamfer all the way around it. That saves me from having to make the extrusion and then click chamfer, 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 and it also cleans up all of my stuff over on the left side so that I have less objects over, less, um, less features over here to go digging through. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click the green check mark on that. That looks pretty good. That's a good start. All right, what do they want us to do next? So I'm kind of looking at this, and it looks like it, it's going to extrude upwards. And I think that's probably the next thing that we want to do. We would just want to make another uh, extrusion that goes up without doing any taper on it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use the extrude command, uh, but I need to make a sketch first. So I'm going to create, let's see, maybe I can just extrude on the surface. So if I click extrude and I click on the surface, yeah, so you don't even need to make a sketch. Uh, this, it's going to use the sketch one automatically. So just click extrude and then click on the sketch itself. And it looks like that one goes up a little bit of space. Um, why don't we say that that goes up 0.75 inches? I think that's reasonable. Click the green check mark, and now you have an extrusion that goes up like this. Okay, and part of our stuff is already done. Now we're getting ready to use the, the lovely loft feature, which is going to be interesting. So what we're going to do now is, let's see here. Uh, yeah, I think we're ready to go. Now, Loft, what it does is it allows you to take a sketch and you're going to basically uh, transition from one sketch to the other sketch. So in this case, it looks like we're going to be transitioning from a sketch to a, um, tr uh, a circle. So we're going to be, our sketch is a pentagon and we're going to be going from a pentagon to a circle. So what we're going to do is, in, in Fusion 360, what you can do is you can create a, uh, a plane up on top, and that plane can be used to um, create geometry on. So we're going to try to do the same thing in Onshape. We're going to try to create a plane, and we're going to move that plane around. So I'm going to click the Plane button, and I'm going to click on this, and see how I can move this plane up and down. Um, so this button right here, the plane button, that's what we're going to need to do. So we're going to click plane, we're going to click on the uh, pentagon, and we're going to move the plane to where it is an appropriate amount for the loft. Because if we look at our screwdriver uh, case, it looks like there's a circular uh, loft position. So, but, but this whole like region right here goes from the pentagon to the circle, and it looks like it does it in a fairly short amount of time. So, or time, a fairly short amount of distance. So I'm going to move this uh, plane just a little bit lower. And I know people always start freaking out. And they're like, well, how, how far do I need to move this down? Uh, they didn't really give us any drawing designs or schematics. So just kind of eyeball it a little bit. And about that far will look good. Just pay attention to the general proportion of the shape. And I think we'll be okay. So I'm going to click the green check mark for my plane. And I have it there. But I want to put something on the plane. So what I'm going to put on the plane is I'm going to put a uh, circle. So we're going to go into sketch. We're going to create a sketch. And I'm going to create a sketch on plane 1. So when I create the sketch, you can see how the plane 1 highlights. I want to click on that and move it in place. Okay. I'm going to create a circle. And if on shape is nice to us, it will completely use that... Um, geometry from above, but it doesn't look like I'm so lucky. So if I try to like click the circle tab, uh, the circle command, and I'm looking for some kind of reference geometry, uh, I don't have any. So I could just kind of guess where the middle is, but that would be like ultra small brain, borderline smooth brain. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that fancy project geometry button, and I'm going to hope that the projecting geometry of this pentagon will help me to be able to get my circle. So I'm going to click here, and now that I have this pentagon in place, I can go down to the halfway mark, and here's a halfway mark. Um, does it give me halfway here? Okay, so we've gone from like small brain to medium brain. I can get the uh, vertical, but I can't get the horizontal. So what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to use... Um, Probably, my guess would be to make some construction lines. That's kind of what I would default to, is I would probably make some construction lines to try to find the middle of this object, or uh, using a circle or something along those lines. The pentagon itself isn't, like, that useful to us. So I'm going to just, like, make a couple of construction lines to 
make sure that I can get the center of the circle. So I think if I just use for the on shape, if I can just use a uh, rectangle like so, make sure I get it matched up. Here we go. About like that. And if I have this as a construction line, so I can right click on these and just make them construction lines. They don't actually have to be a part of the sketch. I think I can use the uh, half and half on shape trick to find the center of this. So I'm going to click circle now and I'm going to try this because I should be able to get the middle of this and I should be able to get the middle of this. I can. And then whenever it goes right there, that's the middle. So I'm going to create a circle and I'm going to try to create a circle. Um, <laughs> now that I look at it, that doesn't really look like it's in the middle. So even though we're in the middle part, okay, just kidding, just kidding. That's not going to be the middle of our circle. So my rectangle trick is totally not going to work. So why don't we uh, to try to find the middle of this. If we were to make construction lines across, why don't we try that? So I'm going to use the line tool. Instead of making a rectangle, I'm going to try to go just straight across. And then I'm going to use the line tool again. And I'm going to go straight across. And I'm going to use the line tool again. I'm going to go straight across. OK. So using our fancy construction lines, this is going to be the center of our pentagon. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make these construction lines. And using all three of them gives me like a guarantee that this is the smack middle of, oop, not copy, construction. This is the smack middle of the Pentagon. So now I feel a lot more confident than my uh, other one that I did. So I'm going to snap these into place, and I'm going to make my circle. And it looks like we're just making a loft around to, uh, looks like it shrinks down a little bit. So I'm going to just make it go out a little bit. Um, I'm still in construction line, so if that does happen to you, just right click and make sure that that one on the outside is not a construction line. Whenever I look back at the sketch, it looks like this is going to be elevated a little bit. So I'm going to use that elevation to my advantage. So we're going to use the loft command. Here we go. We're going to go uh, loft, which is, oh, i got to finish my sketch, sorry. We're going to go loft, which is right here. We're going to click on the bottom pentagon. We're going to click on the top circle, and it's going to loft into place. Okay, and I'm going to click the green check mark. I think we necessarily need to add anything else to that. So what happens is we're going to have on the bottom, we're going to have a pentagon. And then on the top, it's going to take that pentagon shape and it's going to kind of smoothly transition it into a circular shape. And that's going to be basically what we have right here. OK, um, and let's see, we've extruded with a taper. Um, is there anything else that we need to do? Yeah, we need to extrude this out a little bit. And I think that's a good idea. So I'm going to extrude. I'm going to extrude the circle. And we're going to extrude that circle outwards. One inch looks good, actually. So I'm going to click one inch so that we're moving around. And we have our shape that kind of looks like our circle that we have. OK. Now there's a couple of other things that we could do to it. We could use the circular pattern tool to make the holes up in the top. Uh, but the thing that I want to show for you guys is one thing that we haven't done yet, and that's using the uh, shell command. And the, what the shell command will do is it will make the inside of this object hollow so that you're not actually filling up all of this volume. And that saves you time and money. So like in an injection mold machine, uh, if you were injecting this with plastic, if you filled the whole thing up with plastic, that would cost you materials. And what's done instead is they design the mold to where the inside of the material is hollow. So you don't actually have to uh, spend all that extra money on plastic. And, you know, if it saves you 10% on your cost, that's 10% that you can lower the price and be more competitive. So the shell command is actually super useful. So I'm going to click the shell command. I'm going to hope that we don't break in every, everything. Um, I'm going to click the... Uh, object on the inside, this face right here, and what it's going to do is it's going to shell out everything on the inside of the object from that face and on shape. So this whole thing is going to be shelled out, 
and you can change the thickness of the shell itself. So if you want it to be like, I don't know, 0.3 inches, you can change it and the walls will be thicker. If you want to change it to 0.1 inches, change it back and the walls are narrower. Okay, so you can use this uh, to hollow things out. That would be the shell command. Okay, and from here, I think we've got the basic shape of our screwdriver set done. Um, we're going to go ahead and just end that there. If you wanted to, you could put in some circles using the circular uh, pattern tool up on top to have your uh, drill bits go inside or your, or your screwdriver bits go inside. Um, and I think that's going to be it. Uh, have a great day, and I'll talk to you guys next time.